Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? I hope your week went well. I just want to welcome you back. And so when we start our lesson today, it is a really good lesson. And we are going to be learning that Jesus is God. And that will also happen for the next few weeks. We'll be learning about who Jesus is and what he does for us. So let's go into prayer. Our Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you and praise you for this day. And I ask a special blessing upon those watching. I also ask you to help us by your spirit to understand what you are teaching us. And Lord, I am just so thankful for who you are and how much you love us. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, where's the best place to find out about Jesus? Well, of course, God's word, the Bible. Now, today we are going to be looking at four specific things about who Jesus is from the book of John in the New Testament. And this is what we're looking at. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. The first verse I'm going to read to you is John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Well, we find out in that verse that Jesus is the Creator. He made all things. He created everything you can see. The stars, the planets, the trees, the animals, the people, everything, and so much more. Jesus created all that is, and he has wisdom and power to rule over it. Since we know from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, that God created the world, what this actually tells us is that Jesus is God. We also find out that Jesus is eternal. Do you see this special sign here? This is called, or a symbol, this is called an infinity symbol. And that means it has no beginning and no end. And that is what God is. God has no beginning and no end. He has always been and he always will be. Some people think Jesus' life began as a baby in a manger. But he has existed long before he came to earth as a human. Not only was Jesus in the beginning, but he also holds it all together by his power. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 22 verse 13 that Jesus is the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and the beginning and the end. It is through Jesus that we can have eternal life with him in heaven. Now, the next verses I'm reading is chapter, um, John chapter 1, verse 5 to 9. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. So we find out that Jesus is the light of the world. So why do we need light? Well, we turn on a light when we enter into the room, right? To get rid of the darkness and make sure we don't bump into anything. Jesus is the light of the world. And all who follow him will not walk in the darkness of sin. Sin is compared to darkness. And since we all sin, we are all living in darkness. Jesus is the light who will show us the right way to live. Our next verse is chapter 1, verse 14 to 18 of John. And it goes like this. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory. And the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. 
No one has ever seen God, but God the one and only who is at the Father's side has made him known. So we find out that Jesus is our Savior. A Savior rescues people from danger or trouble. For example, the Israelites in the Old Testament of the Bible were slaves in Egypt. They could not save themselves because the Egyptians were so much more powerful. God, through Moses, performed ten miracles, delivered the Israelites from slavery, and led them to a special land where they could be free. We are all slaves to sin. Even if we tr really try hard to do the right thing, we still sin. We need a Savior, someone more powerful to take away our sin and help us to live a life pleasing to God. Jesus is that Savior. He gave up his life and made a way for us to be free from sin. Today, so today we've learned that Jesus is the creator. Jesus is eternal. Jesus is the light. Jesus is our Savior. There is only one true God in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. And we refer to this as the Trinity. And sometimes that might be confusing to us. And we might find it very hard to explain all that. But we also have to remember that even though the Lord gave us amazing minds, we have limits. And we also must realize that God is boundless and he is altogether unlike us. You know, so there are probably some things about God that we will never be able to explain until we meet him. So that's something to think about. If we look at the first John, first verse in John 1, and we have that right here. Whoops, it's gonna fall. Okay. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We see that there are lots of things going on here, right? This talks about the Word. So, who is this Word? Who is the Word? It is Jesus. Jesus is the Word. Jesus became flesh. He became human, and he lived among people. When we are learning a new verse, we should ask ourselves what the verse is saying. This week, we are just going to focus on the first verse. We can replace the phrase, the word, with the name of Jesus. God extended his grace through his son, Jesus. So let's say the verse together with the word Jesus in it. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. We have just learned from the Bible some very important truths about Jesus. And today, we learned that Jesus is God. So here's my picture of Jesus, and we learned that Jesus is God. He became flesh so we could have eternal life with him. If we know Jesus is the word and he is God, we should be so thankful and we should worship him. What are some ways we can worship God? Hmm. Well, we can remember to give him our thankfulness when we see a beautiful sunset or we see a gorgeous rainbow in the sky, or maybe even something very unusual in nature. You know, it's so beautiful. Or how about in the fall when we can go for a walk and we can smell fall, you know, like the leaves and sometimes the pine. It's just such a wonderful smell. We can remember what God's word, the Bible tells us about how to live our lives. Since we are made in God's image, we can demonstrate characteristics of Jesus in our lives. We can be the light to those around us. We can trust Jesus to forgive our sins and desire to have a right relationship with him. 
Your next step this week is to worship Jesus on a daily basis. Worship him by your thoughts and your words and your actions. And I will definitely keep you in prayer for this because some days it can be very difficult. Totally understand on that one. So this week, don't forget your challenge. Remember to honor God with your thoughts, your words, and your actions. And until next Sunday, please take care of yourself. And I will see you back here again. Have a good week.